Part 1 Types of Impurities in Water Suspended Solids The first type of impurity is suspended solids. These are tiny particles that float in water, making it appear cloudy or murky. Suspended solids can range from soil and silt to algae and organic matter. They not only affect water clarity but can also transport harmful pollutants. Dissolved Solids Dissolved solids are the next category. These are minerals, salts, and even gases that have dissolved in water. While they might not be visible, high levels of dissolved solids can affect taste and even cause scale buildup in pipes and appliances. Organic Matter Organic matter is another common impurity. This includes decaying plant material, leaves, and even waste from animals. When organic matter breaks down, it consumes oxygen, which can harm aquatic life and create dead zones in water bodies. Chemical pollutants Chemical pollutants, such as pesticides, heavy metals, and industrial chemicals, can seep into water sources. These substances can have detrimental effects on both the environment and our health, making proper water treatment vital. Microorganisms Lastly, microorganisms are tiny living creatures that can make water unsafe. Bacteria, viruses, and parasites can contaminate water, leading to waterborne diseases. Ensuring proper sanitation and treatment is crucial to prevent such risks. Part 2 What is Turbidity? Turbidity refers to the cloudiness or haziness of a fluid caused by suspended particles. These particles could be anything from silt and algae to sediment and even pollutants. Turbidity plays a crucial role in assessing water quality as it indicates the presence of impurities. Part 3 Importance of Measuring Turbidity Why does turbidity matter? Well, high turbidity levels can affect aquatic life, block sunlight from reaching underwater plants, and even transport harmful microorganisms. It's like trying to see through a foggy window, not easy, right? Monitoring turbidity helps us maintain healthy ecosystems and ensures safe drinking water for all. Nephelometric Turbidity Unit NTU. This is the standard unit for measuring turbidity and is widely used in many countries. It's based on the scattering of light by suspended particles in the water. NTU is used in both laboratory and field measurements. For in nephelometric units, FNU, similar to NPU, FNU is another unit used for measuring turbidity based on the scattering of light. FNU is often used in regions where the formazin standard is preferred. Jackson Turbidity Unit, JTU, although less commonly used today, JTU was historically used as a unit for turbidity measurement. It's based on the visual comparison of water samples with a standard turbidity solution. IBC units, in the brewing industry, the European Brewery Convention, IBC, units are used to measure turbidity. These units are specific to the brewing process and are based on a visual assessment of turbidity in beer. FTU, for maize and turbidity units, similar to FNU, FTU is a unit used to measure turbidity based on the for standard. It's commonly used in some regions and is interchangeable with FNU. The power of alum also known as aluminum sulfate, this compound has been used for decades to clarify water. When added to turbid water, alum undergoes a process called coagulation. It attracts and binds together the tiny particles suspended in the water, forming larger clumps that eventually settle down. Polyaluminium chloride, often referred to as PAC. This compound takes coagulation to the next level. PAC not only clumps particles together but also neutralizes the charge on these particles, making them more likely to stick together. This double action process accelerates the sedimentation process. What is one NTU in water? Water containing 1 mg of formazine per liter has a turbidity of 1 NTU. It is based on the color matching technique. The NTU is measured with an electronic instrument called a nephelometer. A TDS value of 150 to 300 is considered to be fit for drinking water. Part 4 The Science Behind Turbidity Measurement Now, let's peek into how we measure turbidity. We use a fantastic device known as a turbidity meter. These meters work on a simple principle, they shine light through a water sample and measure how much light gets scattered by the suspended particles. 
The higher the turbidity, the more scattering occurs. A typical turbidity meter consists of a light source, a sample chamber, and a detector. The light source emits light into the sample, and the detector measures the intensity of light scattered at a specific angle. This data is then converted into turbidity units, giving us a clear reading of water clarity. Processes involved in turbidity meter are Scattering of light The heart of a turbidity meter's principle lies in the scattering of light. When light travels through water, it encounters suspended particles. These could be anything from fine sediment to microorganisms. These particles are larger than water molecules and cause the light to scatter in various directions. The Tyndall Effect Ever heard of the Tyndall Effect? It's the phenomenon where light is scattered by particles in a colloidal solution, making the path of the light visible. In our case, the suspended particles in water cause the light to scatter, making the water appear cloudy. A turbidity meter capitalizes on this effect to quantify turbidity. Light Source and Detector Inside a turbidity meter, you'll find a light source, often an LED, and a detector. The light source emits a beam of light into the water sample. Now, as this light encounters suspended particles, it gets scattered in all directions. The detector is strategically placed at an angle to capture this scattered light. Calibration and Measurement Before measurements, the turbidity meter is calibrated using a standard solution with a known turbidity level. This helps establish a reference point for the device. As light scatters off particles, the detector picks up the intensity of scattered light. The more particles in the water, the higher the scattering, leading to a stronger signal detected by the turbidity meter. Part 5 – Conversion to Turbidity Units The signal received by the detector is then converted into turbidity units. These units are standardized and can be directly interpreted to assess the cloudiness of the water. This measurement is crucial for understanding water quality, whether it's in a drinking water source, a river, or even a fish tank. So, remember, adventurers, turbidity might be an invisible factor to the naked eye, but its effects ripple through our environment. With the turbidity meter as our guide, we can continue to explore, learn, and work towards a cleaner, clearer future.